This is ground affected. My name is your mum. Welcome to finding your... <laughs> In this video, I'm going to take you through the process of painting Caramon from Dragonlance. This is a private commission. You cannot get this STL. Please don't ask me, but do leave some words in that little space that YouTube allows you to leave some words in. And while you're down there, you might as well click like. And if you haven't already, then consider subscribing. If you don't enjoy anything you see, it's easy to just remove that by the end of the video. Let's just cut the chat. This is going to be a long video. And let's just get straight into painting Caramon. So this statue is a quarter scale statue. This means it's a very large statue. It's not the largest of statues, but it is still a very large statue. So this video, I'm going to kind of just go over a lot of the parts, not too much detail, but just enough so you get an idea of how I painted this model. I'm going to start out with the barrel that's on the base, and I'm going to start painting that in barrel color, which technically for those who really want to know is actually just brown. I'm going to start with a darkish brown, not too dark, but just dark enough. And I'm going to add a lighter brown over the top to give it a highlight. Once I've given it a highlight and a light source, I'm going to come back in because of the textures on it and I'm going to paint a load of wash to fall into the cracks. While that dries, I'm going to start working on the rose bush that's on the base of this model. I painted the green on that and again I need to leave it to dry so I go back to working on the barrel. Because of the texture on the barrel, I'm going to use lighter browns and I'm going to start to dry brush the edges to bring out some of that detail. Once I've done that, I'm going to use a wash to dampen that down again, and I'm going to dry brush again over the top of that. Yes, this is crazy, but this adds layers. Layers add detail, and detail looks very nice. The only problem with dry brushing is that it tends to look a little bit chalky. Perhaps this is because the paint is too dry, and I'm pretty sure that's actually the reason. Let's just not say perhaps it is because the paint is too dry, but I have a way of combating that. If it looks too powdery, you just go with an airbrush and you spray a wash gently over the top of that. This will make it not look powdery and look better. Do this thing and it will look better. I used dark silver and I painted the little rings, the metallic rings that hold this entire barrel together and that pretty much finished the barrel. The only thing I did after that was add a much brighter silver to the edges just to highlight some of the edges and make it look as if the light is definitely bouncing off of this metal. For the rose bush, I'm going to use my airbrush. I'm going to try to keep this simple. It isn't too complicated. It is difficult to paint, but if you break it down into pieces, it's not as bad as it looks. I used consistently lighter colors of green, and I just basically airbrushed clumps. I airbrushed areas so that it had a gradient in clumps. It's a bush. They have clumps. Happy days. In order to create a little bit more depth in it, I used a green wash and I airbrushed that from the bottom. Some of that wash will kind of go over the edges of the leaves and just kind of create a little bit more depth in the greens that I would placed on the bush. For the rose themselves, I'm going to paint them with Flesh Terrors Red, which is in fact a contrast paint and one of the ones that has been discontinued. It's not discontinued because it's bad, it's just discontinued because Games Workshop decided to change their entire range of contrast paints. The reason I use this paint is because its coverage is incredibly good. It gives a nice deep red in the recesses as well as giving you a consistent red over the top of the other surfaces. I use brighter reds and I pretty much just glazed that higher and higher, basically trying to stick to the ridges, essentially just creating a gradient in the rose. For the dragon, I was told I can do any color for these dragons. It could be any color I wanted. And of course I chose to go red, because why not? I just decided red was going to work. The base was mostly green because it's grass, so the red would stand out like a sore thumb in the middle of this sea of green. I started out with a dark red and basically the same concept as I painted the roses. I built it up this time with the airbrush because it's a lot easier, especially because it's a biggest piece and it doesn't mean that I have to carefully get a brush in there. Once I'd given it a good gradient all over and I was happy with the shape that it had, I went in with oranges and I lightened up things like his chest and the wings and the little fans on the side of his head as well. I slowly built up towards a yellow in this. I didn't go completely yellow, but I did eventually end up mixing quite a bit of yellow into the final color 
that was going to show in the highlights of these sections. I wanted there to be some difference, but I didn't want it to be too stark. I painted the horns on the top of his head with horn colour, which we will say is just ivory. It, call it ivory, happy days. I worked on a lot of the details on this little dragon. I tried not to go overboard because painting this piece way too complicated, I feel like will just take away too much of the attention from the main piece of this entire statue. Starting on the model itself now, I'm going to start painting his boots. For his boots, I pretty much just kept the prime layer down, which was black. So this was really helpful. I can just then paint the color over the top of it. Because they've got a bluish tinge in the image I was shown as reference, I just used blue from the top. Essentially, that's the light. I then painted a light brown over the straps that go and hold that shin guard on his knees i think he's probably some kind of a hockey player or perhaps he plays soccer on the weekends i'm not really sure but these would definitely be perfect for playing soccer at first i painted them with a darkish golden color it's technically bronze from the pro Krill series but i do mix a little bit of rich gold into this just to create a nice deep warm gold i then used bright gold and i go in and i painted the edges of the gold I wanted this to create a little bit of difference between the edge and the inside of this armor plate. For the base, I started out by painting the greens on the base. In fact, I made an entire video about how I put static grass on this base. If you would like to see that, it's as easy as looking back through my videos and you will find it in one of my playlists. Admittedly, I probably didn't need to paint all of this grass green, but I did it anyway because originally I had no idea that I was actually going to do static grass. For the little river that goes down the center, I painted a nice lovely light blue. This was going to create a nice reflection of the sky and I pretty much am going to just clear glass coat that at the end. Starting on the face and skin tones of the rest of the model, I'm going to use my simple easy to follow skin recipe there is multiple videos on my channel about the skin recipe if you go back you will find them they are super easy to follow it's simply almost the full set of vallejo fairy flesh set and i pretty much just build my way up through all the colors and tones yes some things have changed over time but i will do a future video where i'll explain certain things that have changed in my skin tone painting situation For the shield, the shield is wooden and it is needing to have a little bit of texturing done to it so what I'm going to do is just create the base layer of a gradient first. I find creating the interest first and putting the highlights where they need to be as well as the low lights before you start doing texturing is going to create a lot more interest in the piece. If you started off with a flat base, you're not going to have as much interest when you look at the piece so creating a good light source and making that gradient happen in the beginning is going to give you a better chance of success towards the end. Here you can see me just adding in some shadows and I'm kind of using the airbrush to my advantage. By spraying it from certain angles, I can make it hit only certain textured pieces and it doesn't go over to the other side. This creates a little bit of a shadowed effect. I'm also going to use a lot of dry brushing on this. I need to create a lot of texture on that wooden section that is on the shield. And by dry brushing it, I'm going to bring out those textures. Again, sometimes this can be powdery. And to fight that powdery look, I airbrush a wash over the top of that. You can water down the wash if it's too dark. Sometimes it can tint the surface way too much. So you can water this down so you can take back some of that color. And it's not as dark when it goes over the top. I painted the edge in the same gold mix that I'm going to use across this entire model. I used it on the shield, I used it across his chest, I used it on every single armor piece that's gold on this model. Basically, it's just the bronze mixed with that rich gold. I did a similar technique with the blue on the hand of the model. I did this both on the sword hand and on 
the shield hand. As you could have seen, I painted the sword already. This I did off camera just because using that Molotol paint, which is what I used on that, is super reflective. It looks amazing, gives a great effect. However, it does coat everything in your room and make a big mess so i just felt like if you wanted to see a video of that there is one of those too on my channel imagine that after i'd painted all the little straps and things on the shield i went in and painted the rivets i used the same gold on the rivets as well i took a bit of wash into my airbrush at this point i don't have to worry too much as long as i'm trying to aim it specifically at the parts i want to darken and i added a bit of shadow to the straps that are holding the shield to his arm once this had been done and i set it aside to draw i started to work on the skin again i went back in this time i've started adding some stuff from the velvet skin set which is from scale 75 this i have kind of briefly covered in a video before but for this specific skin tone it's kind of different to everything that i've done anywhere on this channel so far I will try and go deeper into this in future, but just take it for what it is and enjoy the fact that it's there for you to watch. Unfortunately, the sculptor of this model really doesn't like painters. I'm pretty sure a painter must have kicked him in his shin once when he was growing up. And because of this, he likes to sculpt everything super close together and the cuts don't make any sense for a painter. So this meant I had to paint in a lot of awkward places, putting my brush into the insides of legs and bending it in places it just cannot go to it was a lot of bending and twisting of brushes however i managed to get it into the places i need to you can see me working on the eyebrows at this point i'm just going to kind of work in sketchy kind of motion because what i want to try and do is create almost the illusion of little hairs on this dude's face tiny little furry caterpillars which we will call his eyebrows so in order to start working on the armor and chest plates across his chest and everything like that i'm going to start off with the same brown that i used originally on every single wooden piece yes this isn't a wooden part this is a leather piece however this is going to help tie everything together whilst that dried i went to work on this scale mill that is across the body now if you ever ask me to do scale mill again i'm not going to do it all i'm going to do is paint a solid silver and perhaps try just using a wash over the top because i painted every single scale individually in order to create a nice effect on the scale mill, I used a color shift paint from Green Stuff World and I painted this over the top of that with an airbrush. This gave it a really awesome sheen. When you move the model, it gives off either a purple or a greenish hue, but it's not overbearing because this isn't a color, it's just a color shift. So it has some, I think it's called mica, which is tiny reflective little pieces inside of the paint. Working on that little gem in the center of his chest, I painted with Flesh Terror's red and I'm going to basically outline that with the golden color that I'm using just to shape everything in and I'm going to progressively work up in reds up to a light orange just to create a little bit of a depth look to it. Once I'd got that each layer done, I'm going to use the airbrush just to dry it out. This helps me work quicker. If I'm trying to get something done and I don't have time to sit and wait for each layer to dry, I'll just pick up my airbrush which is right next to me and use the air to dry the piece that I'm working on. Once everything had dried and I was happy with the gradient, I threw over the top of that a nice clear gloss varnish. This was just to create a nice shiny look as if it's a gem. Working on the emeralds that are on the rest of the suit, essentially there is quite a few emeralds that go around his shoulders and for those we need to start creating a good base for the next trick to happen. For that I'm going to use grey, which is essentially just not a dark grey but it's not a light grey, it's kind of like a grey grey. And all I'm going to do is paste coat everything with that, this is going to be a good base for this technical paint which is called tesseract glow and i'm going to paint that over the top of them in a very thin coat i don't want this to pull up too much however it's okay if it goes in the edges this will create a slightly darker edge and a nice light smooth coat over the center i am going to need to highlight that though in order to create a little bit more depth in it i'm going to use yellow and i'm going to turn that into a very thin glaze and i'm going to paint that on the bottom of each 
and every single emerald. This is just going to create a little bit more of an illusion that there is some kind of depth in this jewel. Now we're working on his face again and I'm going to work on the eyes. It's something that I've said in many videos, you've seen me paint faces. I'm just going to let you watch this through and enjoy it while I play some elevator music in the background perhaps. Also, I have had someone have a little bit of a moan at me because I've always, when I've painted faces, mentioned that I use a whitish color to paint the eyes. It's not white, bruh, to that one bruh that says it's white. It's not white. It's literally not white. If you want to know what it is, it's the lighter skin tone in the fairy flesh set. And that color is literally called highlight skin. It's not white. Looking at it, it's actually more of... A peach color it's literally not white please stop telling me you can't paint white in the eyes because it doesn't look all right bruh i don't care it looks good and if you don't like it there is instruction for that at the end of the video once i completed the face and the eyes i'm gonna go in and i'm gonna paint a gloss coat over them just to really ruin my photos when i try to take them at the end of this video but mostly because it will look nice and wet and when the client gets this model he'll go oh look at his eyes they're all nice and wet wow like i said the original sculptor for this model did not like painters so in order to create the depth on the skirt thing that he's wearing i needed to pretty much mask up the legs which is really annoying but i masked up most of the legs and i airbrushed some of the highlights onto the skirt then i had to start painting the little sections of scale mill that were tucked underneath chains underneath a sword sheath and inside of cloth let me tell you that was not exciting that took me about three or four hours just to paint them so they didn't look like my freaking nine-year-old painted them I used the same gold to trim everything up nicely, specifically the buckle and the little leg shield thing that he's got. And then I started to work on the trimming around the cloth. It's essentially just a black stripe and there is little diamonds in it. They are kind of blue and red. So I just alternated the colors. It's pretty simple, really. Shouldn't have told you that because I was actually painting at that time the wash over the belt but just imagine that i told that section in this section and then it will all make sense also i did a little bit of a marble effect on the column or the little bit of thing that's at the back of this entire base if you would like to see more about this make sure to leave it in the comments below and i will try and make a video on something like that Manage to pick out something in this video that will help you with your future printing and painting projects of course we are at the end of the video and i would like to thank my patreons for all the support they've given as well as keeping these lights blind in my eyeballs also i would really like to thank those who watch videos because without your viewership there is no reason to have the channel i must remind you if you want to join the patreon there is a link for that in the description as well as while you're down there make sure to click the like button maybe leave some words because it's the words and the likes and all the things that help tell youtube that these videos are worthwhile being viewed by other people don't ask me why i've been holding my hands together the whole time i've probably captured a small creature and you will never know but let me just end this video by saying if you did not enjoy anything you saw in this video the best thing you can do really is to just click dislike then f off
can't believe this stupid microphone keeps doing this and I have to keep re-recording every time.